Hey, 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 you guys. Who has been cold up here in the Atlanta, Georgia area? Well, guess what? I'm still got my shades on. No, I'm going in the shade, baby. I'm so anyway. <laughs> just a little fun there. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day thus far. Again, I am back. This is Anita and the Biz Coach coming to you with valuable information about grants, tips and trades that you need to know when you're getting ready to apply, uh, when you're preparing yourself to apply, and what if you're already in the process of applying. All right, so today, I wanted to share a little information about foundations and what they look for and how you can stick out from others when you are applying for grant funding through foundations, okay? It's a little bit different than when you're applying for, let's say, governmental grants, all right? Governmental grants are more formal. You know, they have specific things they look for when it comes to, however, with foundations, you have a little bit more leeway because they have a little bit more leeway when it comes to what they can um, fund. They have the discretion of what they do, you know. Um, so whatever their cause is, whatever it is, they've, you know, is a part of their mission that are that those are the causes and the different things that they want to find all right so they have a little bit more leeway so this is when you want to be very compelling because they want to know your story that's why I tell people all the time be able to tell them your story because it depends on what entity you're looking for funding from they um when it comes to foundations again you want to tell them what compelled you to decide to do this particular project or program, right? So they want to know all about your uh, your target population. They want to know how involved they are, if you have them involved in any kind of, you know, level of involvement in what you're doing, because you definitely want to be able to involve them, not just as participants always, but you want to get feedback from them. And that's very important on down the line, especially when it comes to your evaluation and the different things that you're going to need to do when uh, applying and putting those different information in your narrative for when you are developing your evaluation plan and how you're going to do that. That's a whole nother thing for a whole nother day. So with foundations, they want to know why would it be important for them to partner with you? You know, what is it significant things that you're doing already in the community? All right. They want to know what are your current, you know, projects and programs that you're doing? Who are you partnering with already? You know, um, they want that feel good along with, you know, the educational tone as well. They want to know statistics as well. You know, they want a little sprinkle of that here and there as well. You can't just say, oh, you know, they need this and we need that for this, that, and the other. No, you have got to give, bring them some numbers as well. So you want that feel good and that numbers balance, all right? So you got to find that happy medium between those. So those are some of the things that foundations look for. They want to know, you know, why did you, why did you pick that particular program or project to do? How is it going to serve your uh, target population? So you need to be able to elaborate in great detail. Now, what I found recently, however, putting in this, uh, you know, applying online, because most of them are online, uh, with most of uh, grant submittals with any type of, um, you know, whether it's governmental or um, foundations or corporations, most of them are online now. And what I have found is they have that little bit of square and they only give you so much you can put in there. So don't be like me all the time. I like to elaborate. So you have your times where you can just say, go on and on and on. But then there's going to be those other times where you only have 250 uh, characters to fill in that box. I was like, 250, man, I got 1,189 over here. How am I going to do that? But you can always narrow it down. You just need to know how to narrow down to the basics of what they need. Now, they're going to also want to uh, know about your objectives. So they also have to be smart objectives. We've talked about that before. That S stands for uh, specific. That M is measurable. A is achievable. R is realistic. And T is time frame or time bound. So you need to have a timetable in how you're going to achieve all these things. Is it going to be a year program, two years, three years? You know, how long is it going to take you to achieve the goals that you are setting forth, all right? 
just some little nuggets here and there to help you out when you're looking at finding funding with foundations. All right, so you all know I like to share information about different types of grants I've come across recently. So one of, uh, well, a couple that I've come across and they are actually kind of unique, I would think. Um, I used to live in Columbus, Georgia. Of course, I'm now in the Atlanta, Georgia area, but I came across this one from AFLAC Community Giving. Now, uh, AFLAC's headquarters is in Columbus, Georgia. And so when I saw this one, I was like, wow, I, I, I got to share this one with folks that may qualify um, back in my own home stuff, even though I'm from, you know, the SIP, y'all know I'm from Mississippi, a country girl at heart. But um, I definitely spent a lot of years, over 20 to be more specific, in Columbus, Georgia. So I still have a lot of ties to that area. All right. So with this one, it is, like I said, Af uh, AFLAC Community Giving, and it's actually for the states and areas of Georgia, Nebraska, New York, and South Carolina nonprofits for community benefit initiatives. So you have to be in those states to be able to qualify for this because AFLAC has to have a uh, presence in, you know, in these regions where they give um, with this grant. All right, so it says eligible program areas include civic and community, children and youth, environment, minorities, education, health and human services, and art and culture. All right, uh, and like I said, it is specifically, it says Columbus, Georgia, and it says also Omaha, Nebraska, um, Albany, New York, or Columbia, South Carolina. All right, so those are some of the things um, about this particular grant or something else about it. It says uh, applicants may choose from the following types of support, endowment, program or project, event, gift in kind, or general operating support. So it's not many times that you have uh, grants that will give you operating support. So whenever you can find it, you definitely need to tap in if you think you qualify. All right, so the deadline for this one is July 1st, 2022. And that um, would be their third quarter. Uh, let's see. So it says the website you can go to to get more information is www.aflac, and that's A F L A C dot com forward slash about dash aflac forward slash corporate dash citizenship forward slash default. So if you can get that far with it, you know, if you can at least go to aflac.com and you can, I'm sure, do a search there or you can even Google it, perhaps, and it is calling in the Aflac Community Giving. Another one that I came across recently, you guys, I thought was very unique um, and it is very specific. So you definitely have to read these things and make sure that you qualify. You don't waste your time, anybody else's time, applying for something that you don't qualify for. All right, so this one is called Sports Marketing Grant, and it is for grants to Georgia organizations to promote local sporting events. So if you're, uh, the purpose of the program is to enhance the local quality of life and promote tourism. The grant is designed to attract new events and enhance current events to attract visitors who will stay overnight in the Savannah and Chatham County areas. So you have to be either in Savannah, which is in Chatham County in Georgia, or at least the Chatham uh, County area, all right? So um, some of the minor um, or the minimum criteria is it must be a sports related event, festival or training group, um, uh, approval ability, a proven ability to generate occupied room nights at hotels or other lodging entities within the Chatham County area with no less than 100 total room nights. So this has to be a big event that you're hosting that you need the minimum amount of rooms. And it sounds like they would uh, pay for those rooms and it gives you, you know, more details about how many uh, total rooms and how much, you know, would be donated per that. And so the website you can go to for that and the funding source for this one is Savannah Sports Council. All right. So I'm sure they have a website you can go to to get more information. However, to 
apply, um, you can go to www.123, and that's the numbers, 123formbuilder.com forward slash form dash five six nine seven six five five. That's forward slash Savannah dash sports dash council dash sports dash tourism dash grant dash application. So if you can at least get to the sports council website, uh, that's the Savannah Sports Council website, and I'm sure they'll have more information on that there as well. So even though I said it's a uh, little, little, little chilly outside, it's been a little chilly this weekend. Ain't been out a whole lot, but you know, like I said, the sun is out, shining real bright through my window here. So I'm thinking about I might need to go outside for a little bit, get me a little fresh air, um, and just see what's going on, you guys. So again, you know, this is Anita in the Biz Coach. You can find me on social media, baby, at Anita in the Biz Coach at YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Y'all better go on outside and get you a little sun, get you some vitamin D. All right, till next time. See you guys later.